And now today I want to share with you, and I was praying and thinking about uh, what I need to share, you know, uh, in the midst of what is happening all around the world, when you look at it. In, we are living in, a, in an apocalyptic, prophetic time period. If you look into the media, if you look into the world, what is happening right now, um, very unprecedented. You know, think about how people responding to situations, how we are seeing, uh, you know, the outrage, the anger. Uh, we know one thing, that the prophecies are fulfilling. We are getting close. We are getting close to the day of redemption. So one thing that came out when I was thinking about is in the book of Revelation. What God, what Jesus is speaking to the churches. When God is looking into our church, in the sense not the building, but to each one of us. What God is wanted to tell us in this time period, in the situation as we live, how we need to live this life in this turmoil, how our attitude should be, how our behavior that we need to show as a church, as a believers in this world right now. That's what I wanted to share uh, from the book of uh, Revelation chapter 2. Let us turn to our attention to chapter 2 of Revelation from verse 1 to 5. Revelation chapter 2 verse 1 to 5 says like this. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks them in the seven golden lampstand. I know your deeds, your hard work, your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You have persevered with and have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. Verse 4, yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at the first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. You know, this same church, this very church that is in, that was in Ephesus back in the first century, it was in the uh, country of Turkey. We do not see that church right now. There is nothing there. It's completely gone. But the message remains the same, mm -hmm. and it will. It is up. It, it is applicable to all of us. Here Jesus is looking at the church and he's telling and he's commending the church about what the church has done for his name. There are two things that we need to understand here in this church. There is a war, there is a struggle, there is a, that is, there is a warfare, there is a problem that is affecting in this church. One is from outside and one is from inside. You know, let me tell you the God of Satan. What is the God of Satan? That we all know, John 10, 10, it says, The thief come only to steal, kill and destroy. We need to understand this. The God of Satan about a child of God is to steal, kill and destroy that person. Here in this church, when you can see, there is an outward, there is a fight, there is a struggle, there is a problem from without, from without, from the outside. That is, there were wicked people. There were people who claimed apostasy, doctrine issues coming into the church. The church was able to fight that. They were able to overcome that. The church in Ephesus was commended for its doctrinal integrity and perseverance in the time of adversities. In the time of hard times, they were able to go through it. They were able to fight and defeat the attack that is coming from outside. 
But what happens here is, when Satan knew that they, he cannot destroy the church from outside, there is something he started from the inside. There is a fight, there is an attack that started from the inside. Getting so busy fighting for the things that is coming from outside, they forget about something happening inside. Hallelujah. And that is what I wanted to talk to you. That is called return to your first love. Return to the first love. You can see after the command that Jesus gave to the church of Ephesus, he is moving from command to condemnation. From command to condemnation. You know, Jesus always, he compares the church how a husband and a wife is. Take an example, what would a marriage be like if a wife performed all the duties of a wife but without genuine love for her husband? What about a marriage be like if a husband continued to work to provide an income for his family and keep on performing the usual household duties, washing dishes, cleaning the house, putting the clothes to wash, taking everything he does. But he does it just as a routine. Because I have a family, I have to do it. Not out of a genuine love that I am doing. How that marriage would be? That marriage will be a cold, sterile relationship. It's so beautiful that Jesus always uses this. Because that is the one thing that we can understand. We can relate to. And Jesus always wanted to understand his church. That my relationship with the church is exactly how the relationship between a husband and a wife. And Jesus is looking at the church of Ephesus and he's telling, I have something to tell you. I don't see the first love that you had towards me. You're doing great. You're fighting. You're defending the faith. Your orthodoxy is wonderful, amazing. You're defending the faith. But I'm not seeing an orthopraxy in your life. Orthodoxy is there. But something is missing in this church. It's called orthopraxy. The practice of what we preach. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is something that as we live in this end time, I want to remind and refresh all of us, including me. God is speaking to me also. God, do I have that first love I had with you? Or is it so far away because of the familiarity of being, familiarity of doing things, is it getting colder? Is it going diluted? Or am I just coming to the church and worshipping and giving the tithes and money and doing all these things just for the sake of doing? Or am I doing because of my utmost love? Today we sang the song. You want heaven. You left the heaven and brought heaven down. God brought heaven down. And what about us in response? Can we say that, Lord, my love towards you has not grown cold. It's still warm and hot. Can we tell the Lord? Lord, can we examine ourselves and tell how is that my love towards you? Jesus said, you have forsaken the love you had at first. There's a forsake. The word was very strong. Jesus is looking at the church and saying, you forsook it. The word left means you just left alone or neglected. You neglected the love that you had to be. Another 
statement it says the Ephesians distanced themselves from their first love. Let me tell you one thing. I just heard it today. You know how Satan is trying to destroy our children. It is trying to use all kinds of strategy. Even to the young kids. There's a channel we all know that's called Disney Plus. We used to have it in our home. They are starting a series. You know what that series is about? A 12 year old becoming pregnant and having a relationship with the Satan, with the evil. This is a series they are going to start in Disney Plus for younger kids. Beware. Be very, very watchful. Even to my children, like I'm telling them, we need to have the discernment because Satan want to somehow steal our children. This is the biggest strategy I see happening right now. If they can get our children, if they can get the mind and the heart of our children, they know that they are successful. Let me tell you, teach our children to be having the discernment of what they see. I didn't know that. I just came to know about today. Let me tell you, this is the work of Satan. To take away our devotion and love we have to the Lord. And to replace it with other things that look so nice, so attractive. Paul is telling in the book of Ephesians, in the book of Galatians chapter 3, who bewitched you, right? It's in Galatians chapter 3 verse 1, I think, if I believe. Say, who bewitched you from your devotion to the Lord? Hallelujah. What was our first love like? Do you remember? How was our first love when we came to the Lord? When we accepted the Lord as our personal savior. Now I came to the Lord when I was doing my pre-degree back in that time. It's called pre-degree. It was not plus, plus one or plus two. Maybe you can plus one. And my second year, uh, in my, my first year when I was doing, not the first year, second year is when I came to the Lord. If I, if I, in my 12th grade, in my first year, I used to go Bangladesh college, go to movie. And when I came to the second year, I came to the know the Lord. And from the bus stand, bus stop to the school, college, I need to walk almost a mile. And when we walk, it's all movie posters, you know, you know, posted in the walls, both sides. When I came to the Lord, I was so sensitive that I wore a cap and put the cap flat down when I walked through that time to my college because I don't want my eyes to watch any of this and cause a, a, a you know, worry to my Lord. I was that sensitive and I was remembering, God, do I have that same sensitiveness now? Do I have that same first love? Whenever I get a time, I go and pray. I had a friend at that time. I was not friend with him in the first year. In the second year, I, he was a believer too. Every time we get a free time or the lunch time, we both will go under a tree, sit down and pray. That was the time when we came to the Lord. The first love and devotion. Whenever we get the time to read the Bible, read the Bible, spend time with the Lord. And I was thinking myself when I was preparing, God, do I have that same sensitiveness today? Or do I just take it easy, be complacent? It is okay, it is fine. Am I taking that way or am I serious? Just think about ourselves. How was my first love towards the Lord when I came to the Lord? When I was thinking about it, God, how, how is first love towards you? 
how can I understand from the word of God? Suddenly God took me to Genesis in chapter 22 where we can see Abraham. Abraham loved the Lord. He gave completely to him. He didn't have a children at that time. No child. He loved the Lord. But when God gave him a child, God wanted to make sure and test Abraham. Do you have the same love and devotion to me after having a child? That is a portion God just took me there. And I was reading. And I was amazed when I read chapter 22. Verse 1 and 2 it says, Sometimes later God tasted Abraham and said to him, Abraham, remember, one, one time he is calling Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac. Go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. This is a portion that God. God told me, if you want to know what is the first love is, if you want to know Abraham called as a father of faith, if you want to know what first love looks like, go and read that. His only son, whom God gave to Abraham, God is telling Abraham, take him, take your son, take your only son, take him to the whole mountain. Take it to Moriah and sacrifice him. Hallelujah. And when you read further the whole chapter, in verse 11, it says here, But the angel of the Lord came out to him from heaven. And it's beautiful to read there. How many times the angel called? Abraham! Abraham! the first time when God gave the command he called only one time Abraham and now the angel had to call Abraham two times hallelujah do not lay a hand on your on the boy do not do anything to him and it says so beautifully now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Hallelujah. Will our God called us two times our intensity of love and devotion to the Lord is increasing or decreasing? You can see in the story of Abraham to follow the command of God. Abraham's intensity increased. The angel has to call him two times to stop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. This is how our first love like. Just examine ourselves, Lord. Do I have the same passion to you? Same love towards you. More than anything. That is why Jesus said. Unless you hate. Your father. Your mother. Your children. Your every possession. Including you yourself. You cannot. Become my. Disciple. You cannot become my disciple. Let our first priority. Let our first love not be ever replaced. It says the word first. It's not the second. It's not the third. Let everything become second and third. Let our first love be towards our Lord. Towards our Lord. Not our health, not our life, nothing. My first love That is why Psalm is saying Psalm 73, verse 25. Psalm 73, verse 25, it says, Whom I have in heaven but you, and earth has nothing I desire besides you. My 
flesh and my heart may fail but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever can we say that my flesh may fail my heart may fail but I don't care I know one thing God is my strength my desire is you I have nothing to desire more than anything but you Lord that is the prayer in Psalms 1 verse 2 it says but those who delight in the law of the Lord and meditate on his law day and night our desire is Jesus our delight is Jesus hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord Amen. thank you Lord that is why in Hebrew chapter 2 verse 2 it says we must pay the most careful attention to what we have heard so that we do not drift away this is like other things we will know we will recognize we will discern but our love to the Lord it happens very slowly the drifting happens very slowly you know how a log or a boat or a boat in, a, in the side of a lake when there is a wind at one point it will be in this side after five minutes when you look it will be somewhere else why it slowly takes even when you sit in a boat if you done in the river just sit on the boat without any anchor if you just sit in the boat after some time will you be in the same place where you were and you won't even recognize that you think we are in the same place but no, slowly, we won't even know that we are drifting far and far away. That is why very beautifully Hebrew writer says that we need to pay careful attention, careful attention. That Lord, am I in the same place? Amen. Are you first in my life? Or something else came in along the way and you were being pushed away and that became there are so many things that can become first in our life. So many attractions. Our money, our positions, our, our influence. All the things of this world. That is why Satan tried to tempt Jesus. He took him to the top of the temple and said, Oh man, I will give you everything. Satan is not worried on giving us or making us a millionaire or billionaire. He is not worried at all. He is worried about only one thing. Do this guy still have the love to the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Let us have the careful attention to know that I am still. Praise the Lord. When you look at the life of Peter, Peter in Matthew 26, verse 35, he said to Jesus, Jesus, even if I had to die with you, I will never disown you. This was the shout of Peter to Jesus. I will never disown you. And you know what, what happened? In Luke 22, chapter 22, we know that. Uh, Luke 22, 54 to 62. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the country courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the fire and she looked closely at him and said this man was with him and he denied it woman I don't know him he said and a little later, little later someone else saw him and said you also are one of the men I am not Peter replied about an hour later another asserted certainly this fellow was with him 
for he is the Galilean. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you are talking about. Just as he was speaking, the roaster crawled. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Imagine that look of Jesus. Peter, you, a little bit time back you told I even die for you. But in front of a servant girl, he denied Jesus three times. I don't believe Jesus was angry or anything. We read in the Psalms today, what we read, the abounding love. Psalms 103 verse 8, we read, the abounding love of Jesus. With that love, he looked at Peter. Look straight at Peter. And then in verse 62 it says, He went out and wept bitterly. This is what is going to happen in this world, my beloved. The one thing that Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24, verse 12, it says, Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. The love will grow cold. This is what is going to happen in this world. But to you and me, the church, it should never happen. How we can have our first love? How we can continue our first love? Understand, each time when you, why Jesus said that whenever we come together, what we need to do? We need to have his communion. You know why? That is the moment we will refresh. We will refresh our love to the Lord. When you look at the communion, when you look at the bread and the wine, we know the extent of his love that he has shown to me. And every moment, every moment, let me tell you, when you are tired, when you feel not good, this is the one thing that we need to remember. If you feel like my love is my passion, my love, my devotion is growing colder, the one thing that brings you back is the cross, Amen. is the communion, the remembrance of what Jesus did. The Bible says, even before, even when we were still sinners, he died for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember the communion. Remember what Jesus did. The one thing that will keep you, the author and finisher of our faith, always look at him. Never take our face out of the cross. That will always remind us of what Jesus has done for us. And that is why Jesus said, do it until I come back. Do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Another thing that we need to do, especially to our generation. You know, one thing that when you look at the story of Israel, one pattern that we can understand from there, the first generation who saw the mighty works of the Lord, who experienced the wonders and the power of the Lord, they, they, they were with the Lord. They followed the command. But as the generation came, the second generation, the third generation, we can see they are moving away from the Lord. So what we need to do in Deuteronomy chapter 6. If you go to De Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4, it is written very, very clearly. God is commanding the people of God. God is commanding the Israelites. It says, O Israel, here, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up and and. Tie them as a symbol on your hand, bind them on your forehead, write them on your door frames or your houses and on your gates. In the future, verse 20, when your son asks you what is the meaning of this 
stipulations, decrees and law of the Lord our God has commanded you. Tell them, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt. But the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number one, remember the communion. Remember the cross. Number two, talk about it. Talk about it. Talk what Jesus did. Can you try that? I have experienced this personally. Call someone. Especially who are going through some difficulties. And try to say what Jesus did in your life. Let me tell you. More than the other person. You will feel refreshed. Yes. When you go through some hard time, call someone and speak about God's love. Speak about what God did in your life. Speak about the miracles and the mighty work, how God led you. And that will help you to even remember and refresh. When you are tired, when you are down, call somebody and try to encourage. You will be encouraged. If you want to be, have the refreshment of the first love, talk about it. Don't be. When you were in first love, husband and wife, we talk about it all the time. Because that is what in our heart. Fill our heart. Talk about what Jesus has done. Talk to our children, especially. Tell them who we are and the salvation that we experienced in our life. Amen. How God led us through in all our life. And that will keep us refreshed in our first love towards the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you one thing. How Jesus restored Peter. It is so beautiful. How many times Peter denied Jesus? Three times. Let us go to the book of John, chapter 21, verse 15 onwards, 15 to 17. Jesus is restoring Peter now. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Here we can see, Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feel my sheep. See the way of restoration that Jesus did to Peter. Three times Peter denied Jesus. Three times Jesus reminded him, brought him back. Speak to me from your heart. Third time Peter said, Lord, you know me. You know my heart. You know what in me. And help me. You can see the helplessness of Peter. Peter wanted to love Jesus. But Jesus is telling, yes, I want the genuineness coming out of you. If you genuinely desire to love me, you will love me. Here we can see how Peter, how Jesus is bringing back Peter and restoring him to be the leader. And I just want to end with the one word that God gave in my heart today when we were sitting here. Romans 8, 
35 onwards, Paul is saying here, who shall separate us from the love of God? And when we were singing the song, I was singing in my heart, oh God, thank you. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or naked or danger or sword Verse 37, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through whom, whom he who loved us. Verse 39, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our God. My beloved, let me tell you, let this be our challenge towards Satan. Yes, we might be successful in fighting against the attack coming from outside, from within. Let this be our challenge. Remember this, when Satan tried to take our love and devotion away from our Lord, challenge him. That may be through trouble, that may be through hardship, that may be through friends, that may be through job, that may be any situation that we go through. But let us challenge you. You cannot separate me. You cannot separate me. Because we are more than conquerors. Can we just surrender our soul before the Lord and tell Him, Lord Jesus, I want to love you. I don't want you to tell me. Lord, I repent. Lord, I repent before you. If there is anything more than you in my life. If anything I love more than you, my children, my jobs, my material possessions, even myself, if I love more than you. Oh Lord, Lord, I repent. I want to hear from you. You love to me more than anything. More than your life. When you call us home. Or when the trumpets sound. Lord that is what we want to hear. We love you more than anything. More than anything. Lord we love you Lord. Lord as Peter confessed. Lord help us to be hurt. Lord we want to become hurt. We want to become sensitive to the word. When Jesus over and over again, three times when Jesus asked Peter, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these? Lord, this question we ask to us every moment of our life. Lord, help us to be hurt by that and to surrender in the presence of God and tell Lord, you know you know I just open up there is nothing hidden from you everything is open and naked before you you know my heart you know my inner being your God Lord as a church we surrender before you help us to love you more than anything help us to have our first love towards you like Abraham Lord, help us to offer that what we love the most before you and tell Lord, I love you more than this. I love you more than this. Lord, help us to speak like Paul. Is there anything that can separate me from the love of God? Lord, help us to understand that. Help us to be sensitive to love you all in my life. Let you be my desire. Let you be my delight in my life. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray for each and every one who are here. Lord, we thank you that you're speaking to our hearts. Lord, we receive that into our heart. Lord, help us to work that in our life, Lord. Bring that to practice in our life. And examine our life. And to see and remove if there is anything 
that we are nothing more than you. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory and honor and pray. In Jesus' mighty name we all pray. Amen. 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 May the love of the Father and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us until we meet again and all God's people say, Amen. Amen.